Hey guys, I'd like to show you one of the smallest locks that I've ever uh, been given. Adrian Weber gave me this. This is a Zeiss Icon. And you can see it's a Telefonsperschloss, which means telephone blocking lock. Uh, made in Germany. Beautiful little box. And as with everything German, everything has a stamp and a serial number. There were at least six quality control inspectors for these things. And look how small this is, just absolutely tiny. But you can see the Zeiss Econ logo up there at the top. Tiny little keyway. It looks almost like a Yale, but like one third scale. And the way these worked, and to be honest, this type of lock caused me no end of frustration when I was in the Army. When I would have uh, staff duty, these locks would always be on the telephones. And so you couldn't make any out outgoing telephone calls, only receive calls. And if only I had understood lock picking, maybe I could have gotten this thing off and called some of my friends around the world, but no such luck. Anyway, the way it works, worked actually, because this went on dialing telephones, is you can see that that cam on the back is slightly off-center. So you would put it on the phone, on the dialer, and then you would turn it, and it would lock it in place. So that, that's how it worked. Well, it's only a three-pin here. This is the bidding. And uh, quite honestly, Adrian had about 20 or 30 of these locks, and I was able to go through them and pick the one out with the most extreme bidding. So this is literally the highest cut, the lowest cut, and the highest cut. So this is, of all of them, probably one of the most challenging ones uh, to pick. So let's, let me go ahead and uh, we'll put this up in the vise. I'll see if I can't find a pick small enough to fit into this tiny little keyway, and let's see what kind of resistance it offers us now now that we understand lock picking. So hold on just a second. Okay, got it clamped up and I found that I had to put a little piece of leather around it because if I didn't, the tail piece would clamp up in the vise and we wouldn't be able to rotate the core. But it does rotate freely now. Again, there's the key we're working with, three pinner, high, low, high. And let's see if we can't pick this. I'm going to turn it so I have some excess. Uh, I seem to have plenty of room in the bottom of the keyway because it does make a pretty radical turn. My problem is accessing the top of the keyway because I'm still going to use a very thin, this is a filed down decap pick. So it's even, it's a thin down slim pick, let me put it that way. And you'll find you still have a heck of a time just getting it in there and just trying to get the pick located. Come on. All right. All right. So we're in now. Okay. A little bit of tension, and just start working our way out. Pin three. It is a Zeiss, so you got to be very careful. There don't appear to be any security pins. There we go. Security pins in this thing. But because of the high, low, high, let's try one more thing while we're here. Let's try the Bogota because this is designed. When you rock it, it's designed to take out high low highs. So I think if I can get it in there this probably has a pretty good chance. So let's just see if we can put it in. A little bit of tension and let's just try to yeah, rock it. Let's do that again. Lightly slide it in and just see if we can't rock it. Probably should have quit after the first try. After the first success. <laughs> and there we go again. So these Bogotas with the right type of pinning and of course it's only three pins makes it a little bit easier. It, uh, it does work perfectly. Now I have tried to disassemble this lock. Uh, you probably noticed that it's a little bit scarred up on the back where I dis tried to disassemble it. But the, you have to poke out this press fit pin, which I did. And then I discovered that there's a rotation limit on this lock. And it is internal. It will only rotate so far. And I believe that the reason for that is that somewhere in the top here, the Germans have driven a permanent pin in and then finished the outside of the lock. So I can't locate it to punch it out. So this is a permanent mounting. I wish I could chop it open to see what's inside, but I can tell you for sure there's no security pins in this. It's three straight up pins, but being as ice, it is manufactured to some pretty tight tolerances. So it's better than a master lock but not much. Anyway, thanks for your time. Everybody stay safe and uh, stay legal.